Hello and welcome to the Luke Lunchtime Takeaway. We're going on a journey with Jesus through Luke's Gospel as he travels towards Jerusalem and his death and his resurrection. We live in the age of the self. Every one of us is trained to think most of all about ourselves. School prize givings are geared up to be like the Oscar ceremony. Uh, every company has to have its annual awards dinner uh, where they hand out big prizes to the best members of staff. And every business depends on the reviews that they get on TripAdvisor or on Google. Uh, and they need those reviews and they need people to gush in those reviews to tell them how wonderful they are. We are drunk on adulation. In today's passage in Luke's Gospel, Jesus is teaching us a key principle. It's the Christian idea of service. And it's vital for us to get hold of it. First of all, he teaches a parable in chapter 17, verses 7 to 10, the parable of the servant of the master. The master uh, owns a farm, he has servants, and he sends them out to work in his fields. Sometimes they go to plough the fields, other times they go to shepherd the sheep or whatever it might be, but he also expects them to work around the house. So when the servant comes in from the field at the end of the day, what does he do? Does the master say to him, oh, look, come, sit yourself down. I will cook you dinner. Uh, you've had a long day in the field. Just take a rest. No, of course not. He expects his servant to do his job. And his job is to cook the meal and dress himself to be able to serve dinner and serve it at his master's table. And when his master's got his meal, then the servant can go away and eat his own meal um, in the servant's quarters. And Jesus says, verse 19, does he thank the servant because he did what was commanded? Of course not. He's only doing his job. Why should he be thanked for what he has been paid to do? And that's the nature of humble servants. The focus is not on us. We are the humble servants of a glorious master. We put our trust in Jesus, who is the one that we serve. He's our Lord. He's our saviour. He's changed everything in our lives, if we're Christians, and we have surrendered our lives to him. And therefore, to live as a Christian with a servant mindset, to use the language of C.S. Lewis, is that we don't think less of ourselves. We just think about ourselves less. And Jesus says in verse 10, So you also, when you have done all that you were commanded, say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty. Now, Luke follows that with a story in verses 11 to 19 that amplifies the point of the parable. Jesus is traveling to Jerusalem and he's passing from Galilee, where he comes from, through Samaria, which is in the middle of the country. And Samaritans were people who were not trusted. Uh, they were seen because of their history as being part Israelite and part pagan, uh, and therefore they were sort of spiritually distant from God and, and suspect and unclean. Jews had no dealings with Samaritans. And as Jesus passes through Samaria, he encounters a group of 10 lepers. And because they had leprosy, they would be treated as unclean. And they kept their distance and they cried out to him for mercy and healing. And Luke says, verse 14, when he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. Now, let me explain. Leprosy made you not just physically unclean, but it made you religiously unclean. If you had leprosy or some other skin condition, you were not allowed to go and worship in the temple with, with the company of God's people. Uh, you had to keep yourself away because you were treated as unclean. So if your leprosy was somehow cured or uh, your other skin condition cleared up, then you had to go to the priest and show them your body and prove to them that you were now physically clean and you could be readmitted to the, the, the company of people worshipping God in the temple. And Jesus is saying, look, trust me that I can heal you. Start your journey now. As you go and set off for the priests, you will find that you have been healed. Now, of course, he's also setting a test for them. 
because you know, here are these lepers and if if they suddenly look at their hands and they're healed and they're transformed what are they going to do about that they will know that Jesus has healed them and one of those ten comes back to Jesus to worship him and to thank him for what he's done for him and Jesus says as he's received this man's worship were not ten cleansed where are the nine was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Once again, the people who should have known, presumably some, some of these lepers were um, Israelites, they would have been well grounded um, in the whole of the Old Testament scriptures. Um, they should have known better to recognize their Messiah and to put their trust in him. But this man, who's a Samaritan, who's sort of at a distance uh, from the people of God, he's the one who comes and worships. Those who should respond don't, and yet somebody who's far away, he is the one who comes and worships Jesus. So what matters most in your life? Is it all about you, your fame, your rights, your glory? Or will you come and learn to be a servant of Jesus? Will you bow down to him as your saviour? And will you surrender your life to him as your Lord? Thanks for joining me and I'll see you again next week.